Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to continue on with our series of doing no harm. And this is a dimensional thing. You know, we're trying to find dimensions that work for our usage. And obviously all usages are different, but this ceiling dimension is the most critical. And people just don't understand that. And in North America, we're kind of in a bad spot. Unfortunately, I'm in a room right now with about a 10 foot ceiling, so it's really nice. But in most rooms in North America, we have that dreaded eight foot dimension. Oh, if you came to me and said, Dennis, I'm building a new room. What's the worst dimension I could do to make my, my life miserable? I'd say eight feet. I'd say seven feet will make your life in, in unbearable acoustically, but eight foot's just as bad, okay? We build new rooms all the time. I try to fight all the time for 11, 12, 13, and 14. 14 is ideal. So I always try to fight, you know, on the side of the room because I know down the road as we get into the project, that low ceiling height is going to come back to haunt us. So it's always the smallest of the three dimensions. Our width and length is always greater, okay? The thing about the low ceiling height, depending on your usage, Let's say you're putting drums in a room with an eight foot ceiling height. Maximum pressure from source, lowest ceiling dimension that we should be working with. So you have these pressure and then you have the reflections that go along with a low ceiling height. So no matter what your usage, you have a boundary surface that's so close to what you're doing that the pressure and the reflections are always an issue at your ears and the microphone position. How do we control treatment? Since it's a pressure related issue, we have to use low frequency treatment. Low frequency treatment is deep. Eight, 10, 12 inches, depending on frequency and amplitude. I don't care what the literature says. I don't care what these companies call bass traps, etc. all this garbage, makes no sense. Low frequency treatment is thick. It takes space. And with an eight foot ceiling, what are you gonna do? Say you have a 30, 40, 50 cycle problem from floor to ceiling. You're going to need 8, 10, 12 inches of space. Now you're at 7 foot. Now you create a whole nother set of problems. And the weight of low frequency management technology may not be able to be supported by your existing structure. So you run into all kinds of other issues here. So we need distance to reduce pressure, to minimize reflections, and to add the treatment requirements for the usage. So here's another thing about the ceiling. The problems run the whole room. It's not just sidewall to sidewall, front to rear. Ceiling pressure runs the whole length of the room and just fills the room up. So we have a dimension and a surface area that's causing the biggest problem and leaving us no space for treatment. So we're really stuck. So we treat on the side walls in the front and the rear wall, keep our fingers crossed that you don't hear the ceiling. And that's what I tell people in a lot of cases, they're on limited budgets. Go after the side walls, front and rear first. Leave the ceiling for last, because you might not even be able to hear it. Depends on your hearing skill set and all of that stuff. But you're going to have 80% of your hearing issues to deal with with the front and side walls. So treat those first. Keep your fingers crossed that you can live with that 8-foot dimension. And then if you can't, then we can treat it. Unfortunately, with 8-foot, we're really limited to what we can treat. Okay? So because we don't want to make things worse, remember? Do no harm. We don't want to add 8, 10, 12 inches of treatment to the ceiling, two things will happen. Now we're at seven foot, so we've created a whole other set of problems. So the treatment has to work really hard. And there's ways we can do that, especially with our diaphragmatic technology. And then the second problem is the ceiling may collapse from the weight. So you have to be really, really careful here. So reflections, eight foot, we just don't have any distance to manage the time signature of the reflection. So we're getting it right away. So if we're sitting in our chair in the listing room, the reflection that's going to get us is floor and the ceiling. And we just don't have any distance 
to manage it. So we have to absorb. Diffusion is almost out of the question because we just don't have enough distance for the diffuser to do its job. So remember, sound quality is about doing a lot of little things correct and in the right order. But with eight foot and seven foot ceiling heights, we don't have any room to treat. So it's a kind of terminal in, in terms of acoustics. And unfortunately, that's where we're at in, in these rooms. So if you're really serious about sound quality and you're looking for a room, two things. First, send me the dimensions before you buy or lease. And then we can look at the problems ahead of time and assign the costs and treatment to the usage. And two, uh, you know, make sure that you get something higher than eight foot. Nine is way better. Ten is good. Eleven is real good. Twelve is about 10 percent better than eleven. Thirteen and fourteen are beautiful. So those are some ratios that will help you. Remember, do no harm. Get some ceiling distance to work with. I don't care what the usage is. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.